Today we will discuss another topic of paleontology which is known as taphonomy. Now taphonomy is the subject or is the topic or you can say it is a main guiding process or factor which will govern how an organism after its death whether it goes to the fossil record and we encounter it as uh, a fossil or in due time the organism uh, will not preserve that that is we will not get those organisms as fossil so it is the main uh, determining process uh, whether we get a fossil or not now the first thing you have to remember or you have to keep in mind that fossilization is a rare event it's a by chance thing uh, being not preserved is the most common thing so anything which will preserve and we get them as fossil uh, those are the rare phenomena and those are the rare glimpses of ancient organic world now if you look at some uh, numerical value see that our fossil record is very very insignificant compared to the recent day organisms you can see that till date about 45 lakhs living species of plants and animals are uh, scientifically described so this 45 lakhs uh, living plants and uh, animals are of the last uh, few hundreds of years in contrast the rest of the uh, 4.6 or 4.7 billion years time it was only about uh, two and a half lakh species uh, of fossils of both plants and animals are described so you can see that in contrast to the present day living species the fossil species of the enormous vast amount of time which are uh, discovered and which are described scientifically they are very insignificant so you can see that all the described fossil species represents only about five percent of the total number of species of the entire time span so if you summarize those two uh, values that is the fossil species and the living species fossil species only constitute about uh, five percent of the total number of species so you can see that the uh, fossils numbers uh, is very low compared to the present day organism number uh, that is why it is said that the uh, preservation is a by chance incident so if preservation is truly efficient the number of species should dwarf number of extant species because these uh, two and a half lakh species uh, is for the entire phanerozoic and as well as the um, precambian times except the first one billion years so it covers almost a uh, 3 to 3.5 3 billion years history um, by these uh, 2.5 lakh species. Now, if the fossil decor is complete, if fossil decor is very good, then this number must have uh, much, much higher compared to the present day, uh, organism numbers. So that is why you can say or uh, a paleontologist will say that the, uh, all the organisms who lived in the ancient uh, earth they are not preserved most of the organisms are uh, being destroyed during the fossilization process only a few among those they are preserved by chance now if we consider all the processes which an uh, organic body goes through from its uh, 
living condition or just after its death to ultimately where we get them as fossils they will go through several processes first if an organism where it lives and after it dies it will be deposited and preserved there then that assemblage is known as biocenosis that means a organism where it uh, live uh, it death occurs there and after it dies it will not transported to any other place but it stays in its own place and uh, from that place it is discovered or it is identified in later time as fossils then that assemblage is known as biocenosis but after the death of an of an organism what will happen to those organisms before they are uh, discovered or before they are identified in the rock record as fossil firstly after the death of any organism the decaying or scavenging uh, organisms such as the bacteria they will decompose the soft tissues the muscles of the organisms uh, you may often see that a dead body of any animal which after its death um, few hours or few days uh, later after its death uh, from that body some, some very bad smells are coming now this bad smell is due to the uh, scavenging or decomposition decomposition of the soft tissues decomposition of the muscles that means the soft masses of that organic body by the decomposing or scavenging uh, organisms so due to this scavenging or decomposing process from that uh, soft mass they becomes rotten and that is why some bad smells are coming so this process is known as necrolysis now after the death of, of an organism that uh, dead bodies if they are transported from their original place and deposited elsewhere that means there is some amount of transportation from its original uh, position of living or original position of death uh, to its uh, original position of deposition occurs then that assemblage is known as thanatocenosis so if an organism leave uh, death and uh, deposition for fossilization occurs at the same place then that assemblage is known as biocenosis whereas an organism which after it death it is transported to elsewhere and deposited then that assemblage is known as thanatocenosis so in case of thanatocenosis these assemblages are known as allochthonous assemblage that means transportation is occurring here in case of biocenosis that assemblage is known as autochthonous assemblage assemblages that means these are the in situ organisms uh, which are deposited at the same place where they are living so after the uh, deposition of the organisms and during transportation many parts of the organisms they are broken up uh, some scatters into several species into different fragments uh, and this process is known as biostatinomy so after the death if we look at the process first the, the soft masses or the tissues are uh, decomposed by the decomposing bacteria then the hard parts in biostatin with the hard parts they are broken down into small fragmentary pieces this is known as biostatinomy and they deposited so that is known as the initial fossil assemblages they deposited beneath the uh, soil cover or beneath the sediment cover now in sediment cover these uh, remains of the organic bodies they will suffer some kinds of diagenesis that is recrystallization uh, some kinds of dissolution replacement of the shells 
the things those are uh, learned in our previous classes and uh, sometimes metamorphism and deformation of organic remains also happen so after these diagenetic effects ultimately we get them in the final fossil assemblages when we discovered them from the rock record and taken them to our laboratory for the studies so you can see from the death of an organism to ultimately getting it as a fossil an organic body may go through several processes firstly they are going through a necrolysis where after the death the first and uh, foremost thing which is destroyed that is the soft parts so it is said that the soft part of the organisms as the most readily decomposed thing decomposed material after the death of an organism so that is why uh, most of the soft bodied organisms during fossilization process they are not preserved so if you consider um, organisms having soft parts and hard parts uh, the organism having hard part they are more favored uh, the, due to fossil to become a fossil secondly during transportation the hard parts uh, they are teared they are eroded they are broken down into some several fragments and lastly during diagenesis many recrystallization replacement and sometimes dissolution uh, and complete loss of the hard part of the organisms may also happen so in any step there is ample chance of getting lost of the organic remains okay so if an organism survive necrolysis then also it can be destroyed during biostatinomy and diagenesis if an organism survive necrolysis and biostatinomy then also there is ample chance that it will be destroyed during diagenesis so you can clearly see that after the death of an organism the chance is very very the chance of preservation is very very um, less or in um, percentage so only a few uh, organic bodies or organisms of the ancient times they are preserved as uh, fossils now the subject taphonomy or the uh, process of uh when organisms uh, during fossilization process uh, this taphonomy uh, word or this taphonomy topic was first introduced by the uh, soviet russian uh, scientist ivan efremov uh, in 1949 uh, here you can see the picture of that great person uh, he described he tried to describe uh, this transition of organisms during fossilization in different stages uh, of fossilization uh, into a common heading and that uh, heading is known as nowadays as taphonomy uh, now the taphonomy word is coming from two greek words first was the uh, taphos which means burial and nomos which means laws so together that is the law of burial of an organisms and during this uh, burial process of an organism after its death how they will behave and how they will react with the uh, surroundings surrounding biotic and abiotic bodies and how their evidences are destroyed and how much evidences of the organic bodies will preserve that study is uh, is being done in under the heading as taphonomy now for studying a fossil it is important to determine whether the studied fossil was buried close to its uh, living condition living environment or it will be transported to another place by some natural agents and deposited there so those uh, organisms or those organic bodies uh, which are transported and deposited elsewhere from its uh, original living environment those are known as allotholous assemblages okay. and those uh, 
uh, which are deposited and ultimately preserved uh, as fossils in their uh, in situ condition that means where they lived and died uh, from that place you get them as fossils those are known as autochthonous assemblages now you may often see uh, if you visit a um, beach area many of you obviously visit a beach area after your exams or in a holiday season uh, you may find that in beaches there are several shells of marine organisms and it but but those shells bearing organisms you will never find in the beach areas only thing you will find that is the dead shells of the marine organisms so those organisms those uh, organic cells are they belongs to autochthonous assemblage or they are allochthonous because if they are autochthonous assemblage then along with the dead shells you will uh, get the living organisms live organisms also there and what you get that you are you are only getting the dead cells not getting a single uh, live organisms in the beaches so that means those organisms basically they live uh, far deeper part into the sea after their death uh, those hard parts uh, after their death the soft parts are decomposed and the hard parts are transported or carried out by the uh, waves and deposited in the beach areas so basically those organic uh, remains they are uh, they suffer some amount of transportation but they are deposited within the same uh, basinal condition that is they are not suffering a prolonged transportation so for those assemblages uh, they are known as para autochthonous that is they are not sensu stricto autochthonous that is they are not truly autochthonous some amount of transportation is there but they are deposited at the same basin that is why they are known as para autochthonous assemblages so autochthonous means where an organism leave after its death they are deposited and preserved as fossil at the same position allochthonous means where an organism leave after its death they are transported elsewhere and deposited and preserved as fossil that means that some amount of transportation is there and there is a um, difference between in living condition and its final uh, fossilization condition uh, of the organic remains so those assemblages are known as allochthonous assemblages and paraautochthonous means that organism living in a condition after its death they will suffer same amount of transportation but they still stay at their at the same basin condition at the same environmental conditions so those assemblages are known as para autochthonous assemblages so as you uh, see previously that there are three uh, sub processes or these three subdivisions of taphonomy first is the necrology that is death or loss of part of organisms that is and in most cases or the most readily uh, lost part of the organism is the soft part soft muscles or tissues they are the most readily decomposed portion of the organic body second process is the biostatinomy that is the biological process that affect organism after death and prior to final burial in this case mostly the uh, wearing away that is the uh, erosion abrasion of the hard parts breaking down of the hard parts fragmentation those things are occurring in this uh, process and lastly the diagenesis process um, which happens after the burial of the uh, organic remains um, by the uh, physical chemical condition of the depositing medium in that time some amount of changes are also there sometimes the remains get completely lost uh, sometimes it is replaced by some other kinds of material so these changes are happened uh, under the process as diagenesis and each and every stage 
of these three necrology bioastronomy and dynamics they have the potentiality to destroy the organic record completely now what do you mean by taphonomy if we try to uh, define the word taphonomy it is the study of the processes that affect the decomposition dispersal erosion burial and re-exposure of the organisms or organic remains after its death and before getting it as fossil so taphonomy acts immediately after the death of the organism and it will act up to the time um, when it is uh, discovered or when it is uh, collected from the record by somebody so during this entire time span from death to its final collection as fossil all the changes are known as uh, taphonomy now the first process that is a necrolysis where the death of an organism happen now how many ways a death can happen a death can happen by naturally that is due to the old age death may happen due to some uh, disease death may happen due to some accident death may happen during some uh, fighting during some predatory activity uh, or death may happen due to some suicidal activity also so all these uh, processes uh, death of an organism happens and uh, during or immediately after the death of an, of an organism the soft muscles of the organism starts uh, decomposing or soft muscles of the organism starts fastly uh, teared off during uh, death and after death they will start decompose and rotten down to uh, and for that we get bad smells during biostratonomy what happens uh, abrasion of the cells abrasion of the cells disarticulation so the joints between the hard parts of the organisms those joints becomes and dislodged and separation of the, the uh, hard parts happen bio erosion some biotic bodies they uh, try to uh, do or try to make their shelter within the dead bodies and during making their shelter within the dead bodies they erode the hard parts of the pre-existing organism so those are known as bio erosion dissolution of the organisms hard part mainly rounding of the cells any sharp edges of an organisms during prolonged abrasion those sharp edges becomes rounded so more roundness of an organic uh, cells age indicates that they are pro abraded for a prolonged time incrustation may happen incrustation of uh, biotic or uh, abiotic bodies that is previously you came to the heading as par mineralization where a mineral coating occur over a biotic uh, body over a fossil imprints sometimes uh, some organic uh, encrustation or cutting covering uh, other organic bodies cover the uh, entire dead body fragmentation that is breaking down breaking down of hard parts and if you uh, think a condition where a random death of an organism happened then after its death their orientation may be haphazard but if in the fossil record you may find that the or dead bodies of the ancient organisms or the fossils are oriented in a particular direction then you may say that after its death there must have some processes uh, occurred there which basically align them into certain directions that means some taphonomic uh, effect will be there uh, for this orientation now what causes these indicators that is the environment weather and transport uh, the environment where it leaves and the environment where it deposits if they are not same then most cases the these kinds of changes will occur even uh, after the death on, of an organisms in the environment where they are living and in the environment where they are deposited if they remain same then also 
uh, these changes can be happen. Say for example, bioerosion can also happen in those cases that is auto for autochthonous assemblages. Animals that is the scavenging, trampling, transportation, uh, this may happen in any kind of environment for autochthonous as well as all allochthonous assemblages. Diagenetic processes, three things, replacement, recrystallization and carbonization. Uh, these things are already described, already discussed in your previous classes. Um, replacement means replacement of the original material by some other kinds of material. Recrystallization means the crystallization internal atomic structure is changed, the, but the basic chemical composition remains same. And in case of carbonization, the organic tissues, all the uh, tissues, uh, chemical elements, they are uh, broken down and only thing the carbon uh, remains as it is so that is known as carbonization now what are the taphonomic filters now i previously said you that in most cases the organic bodies are destroyed organic bodies are not preserved in the fossil record so why some organism fossilize and others do not now the first question came uh, to answer the previous question that is uh, why some organisms fossilize and others not that means some are favored and some are not so who are favored for fossilization if we consider that the organism having hard part and an organism having no hard part here you can see two pictures the first one is the jellyfish that is entirely uh, composed of soft muscles entirely of soft tissues no hard part is there and another the bottom picture is of a bivalve that is uh, having a hard outer cover and the internal soft mass so in this both uh, organisms if we go through this process after the organisms what i said in the necrolysis stage scavenging or decomposition of the soft part happened here so for jellyfish scavenging and decomposition means entire loss of the organism that means nothing remained after the necrolysis stage whereas in this bivalve after its death scavenging and decomposition only destroy the soft part but the hard part remains so that hard parts may go through this process and can be found in the fossil record so in organisms having no hard part their preservation potentiality is very poor they are fastly de de destroyed or decomposed in this stage in the necrolysis stage even if they survive this stage then during this process they are uh, lost from the record so an organism having hard part uh, their chance of preservation is much much higher than an organism having no hard part even if you uh, see that an organism like us who have both hard parts and soft parts uh, after our death uh, the most favorable portion of our body uh, for being fossilized is the bones that is the hard parts our t muscles our tissues they can be destroyed um, by the decomposing bacteria so by the decomposing organisms here you can see that a, a pig after its death they are uh, thrown into the roadside and the decomposition uh, bacteria or decomposing organism starts their work so after a few hours you may find that the uh, body of the pig becomes swollen and after some days you can see the destruction of the muscles will happen um, there are some scrapped marks that means those muscles are already destroyed and few uh, days or few weeks after you can see only the hard parts remains all the soft mass of this um, body of dead body of being they are completely destroyed that is completely taken up by the decomposing bacteria next an organism having a single hard part that means their hard part is made up of a single um, skeleton body whereas in contrast to the single heart part an organism having multiple heart parts just look at the example a gastropods 
having a single hard part that means there is no joint between the hard parts and in contrast a crab which have hard parts but these hard parts are part by uh, part and there is multiple joints are there you can see the claws this is one part uh, this is one part uh, this is one part and these two parts are joined here in a, again this part and this part is joined here similarly in case of our bones uh, if you see our hand uh, it is uh, joined in several places only if you think about your finger there are three to four joints are there so that means we have we have hard parts but those hard parts are multiple parts jointed by some mechanism okay so the hard part of the organisms having single hard part or having multiple hard part they are mostly affected in this biostratinomy part so i consider that in necrolysis stage all the soft parts are destroyed so only thing remains is the hard part now the organism having one single hard part they can survive this uh, biostratinomy stage but the organisms having multiple hard parts those hard parts can be broken down then can be fragmented during this biostatic parts that means during the transportation that is the most common phenomenon happened here so if a dead body of an human after this death it is transported by the natural agents from one place to another then all the bone bones they are loosened up from the joints and they are uh, disseminated into different areas so that means the joints are dislodged so the entire organic body now becomes uh, fragment to, fragmented to several pieces and they are deposited in various places so now it is very difficult um, to a person or to anybody to know where they are deposited where those parts of the organisms are deposited and there is ample chance during this disarticulation of the joints the hard parts become completely lost so again not only the hard part but bearing organisms are favored in fossilization but the hard part but the organisms having single hard part they are more favored for fossilization compared to the organisms having multiple hard parts second the size of the organisms here you can see um, the two pictures of an organisms in the first picture you may apparently um, seems that these two uh, organisms are of same animal and they are of same size but look at the scale here it is one centimeter and here it is uh, in micrometer scale so both are one uh, one micrometers mean uh, 10 uh, if we divide one meter in into 10 lakh segments then among the, um, those 10 lakh segments one segment is equals to one micrometer so you can now estimate you can now get an idea that these organisms is very very tiny in size that is microscopic in size whereas this is a macroscopic organisms now if a macroscopic organism and a microscopic organisms uh, they are both exposed to the same environment then due to the uh, higher surface area of the macroscopic organisms their chance of destruction uh, during the fossilization process is much much uh, higher okay. whereas a tiny organism their chance of destruction is much much less so in organisms having um, very low in size very tiny in size their chance of preservation is again high compared to an organisms having large surface area second um, the organ where the organism lives that is an important factor you can see from this picture uh, that's a uh, photograph of an terrain it's a uh, hilly area then a flatland and then the marine condition now in this picture if we take two organisms one lives within the marine condition and one lives in the hilly area so after 
death of these two organisms what will happen now this organism after death of this organism it will settle down to the sea floor so almost the organism where it lives it will settle um, in that area and there is no amount of transportation and we all know that our mean sea level is the base level of erosion that means above mean sea level all those areas these are here mainly erosion will happen deposition is very very less above the uh, base level of erosion or above the mean sea level whereas below mean sea level that means below base level of erosion mainly deposition will happen so this organism after it depths settle down in the sea floor and as there is no erosion and mainly deposition or sedimentation occurs here so immediately after its uh, settlement to the sea floor this organism is covered up by the sediments whereas these organisms after its death as it is in the zone of erosion uh, so this organism must have transported by some natural agents to the uh, basin and getting deposited below the base level of erosion if it if these organisms settles here then it is not a stable condition where the deposition will happen because this area is still above the base level of erosion that means any time this uh, condition may suffer erosional activity so whenever the organisms goes below the base level of erosion then only its uh, stability its settlement is uh, can be thought as permanent that means it's a stable condition so for getting a stable depositional condition this organism body must have suffer a prolonged transportation path and it is ample chance during this transportation uh, journey that the organism remains being lost from the history the soft parts being decomposed the hard parts being dislodged from their original position they becomes fragmented and ultimately the entire organism goes lost another factor which is responsible for preserve different preservation uh, condition of these two organisms that is the burial rate that means the sedimentation rate that is how quickly an organism is um, buried by the uh, sediments that means it is uh, covered up by the sediments how quickly again the organism living in below the base level of erosion uh, as it is the condition or environment of more sedimentation rather than erosion so after its death it will be uh, readily covered by the deposition deposition of sediments whereas these organisms as it is in the zone of erosion then the after its death it will not covered by the sediments instead of that it will be transported by the natural agents so burial of an uh, organism after this is very important now why burial is important because what i told you previously that immediately after the death of an organisms having soft parts you know any organism in the world they have soft parts obviously the hundred percent they have soft parts an organism may have hard parts or may not but soft part of uh, organ all the organisms must have soft parts so what i told you earlier that immediately after the death of an organisms the decomposition of soft parts starts fast now who did this uh, decomposition the decomposition decomposing or scavenging bacteria now these decomposing and scavenging bacteria they will decompose or scavenge the uh, soft mass of the organic body very well uh, in presence of oxygen that means their activity the activity of decomposing or scavenging bacteria is much high in presence of free oxygen now that free oxygen can be anywhere that free oxygen can be your atmospheric oxygen that free oxygen can be your the dissolved oxygen in the water so in pre in presence of free oxygen the activity of decomposing bacteria much much higher whereas in 
absence of free oxygen if those decomposing or scavenging bacteria they will not get those free oxygen from the atmosphere or from the dissolved uh, water body then their activity becomes very less that means the uh, hard part will the, that means the soft part sorry that means the soft mass or soft muscles of the organic body will not readily goes for decomposition okay now consider two cases this case where an organism remains in the base level uh, remains below the base level of uh, erosion and and organisms at the same condition where this is also uh, this organism so this organism also uh, is at the below base level of erosion now if i vary the sedimentation rate in these two basins so for this case if sedimentation rate sedimentation rate if i consider is very slow that means sedimentation rate is uh, slow so what happened and here sedimentation uh, rate i consider is very uh, high so what happened in the first picture that is in the top picture the organisms uh, here in this picture the organisms after it did uh, when it's settled down in the uh, sea bottom then it will take a much much longer time to bury it completely to cover it out completely by the sedimentation because sedimentation rate is slow suppose here sedimentation rate is 1 cm per year and the height of this organism is uh, 5 cm so it will take to completely cover up the uh, organisms 5 years because the height of the organism is 5 cm and the sedimentation rate is 1 cm per year so if we consider the sedimentation rate remains same then 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm to completely cover up the organism it will take 5 years whereas the same organism having 5 cm height if the sedimentation rate is here is uh, say for example 5 cm per year so that organism uh, required to be completely buried only one year so within one year this organism becomes completely covered up by the sediments this organism to be covered completely by sediment requires five years so the organisms these two organisms among these two organisms these organisms become open to the free oxygen condition of water for a prolonged time because here sedimentation rate is low and it is not covered uh, very quickly so that means chance of uh, decomposition or time of decomposition uh, the decomposition bacteria will get more and more amount of decomposition time that is five years they will get uh, to decompose these organisms in contrast these organisms to be decomposed the decomposing bacteria or the decomposing uh, organisms will get only one year of time so that is why because the only in during this one year interval these organisms remains open to the free oxygen of the water so in absence as i already told you in absence of free oxygen whenever it is buried under the sediments uh, within the sediments there is no uh, very negligible amount of free oxygen so in that condition uh, decomposing bacteria the aerobic bacteria they will not uh, function properly they will not um, very much active okay so burial rate can be a very um, essential factor for decomposition uh, of an organisms or in other way you you can see that burial rate uh, is an important factor for preservation of an organisms a rapid burial enhances fossilization rapid burial enhances uh, preservation whereas slow burial um, uh, they are not supporting 
uh, for preservation they are not good conditions for preservation okay uh, another thing that is an aerobic condition and aerobic condition aerobic condition means a condition where there is ample amount of free oxygen anaerobic condition means a condition where is less and less amount of free oxygen that means one is full of free oxygen one is and devoid of free oxygen so suppose an organism is buried under uh, coarse grain sediment and another condition an organism is buried under uh, fine grain sediment now you all know that in coarse grain sediment there are uh, the volume of pore space is much higher compared to the fine grain sediments so in coarse grain sediment after the burial of the organisms even even after the burial of the organisms for coarse grain sediments uh, there is ample amount of free oxygen so even after the burial those uh, decomposing bacteria in the pore spaces of the sediments in presence of free oxygen they can act over the dead bodies of the organisms whereas in fine grained sediments as there is very insignificant amount of pore space so very insignificant amount of free oxygen so the aerobic bacteria or decomposing bacteria they will not function uh, properly in absence of free oxygen so again uh, sediment size is also a guiding factor fine size uh, enhances preservation because of less amount of uh, free oxygen in the pore spaces uh, coarse size enhances uh, coarse size basically not supportive against preservation because of much amount of free oxygen within the pore space again the coarse material uh, it is very much uh, known to us that the coarse materials are preserved coarse sediments are deposited in high energy condition so in high energy condition the organisms is most likely becomes destroyed now suppose the in river ganges in hilly terrain compared to the hilly terrain and the flat lands of sundarbon there is a huge energy difference now as in the himalayas the energy condition of river ganges is very high so an organism lives there uh, their chance of preservation in those himalayan foothills is very very insignificant is very very less whereas as organisms living in the flatlands of uh, sundarbon uh, due to the low energy condition due to we get the finer size sands finer size silt clays deposited in those place which this green size is basically indicative of the energy condition of the river and due to the low energy condition uh, the organisms lived in those conditions they are not destroyed by the uh, river or river river water that is the moving water so those organisms must be uh, or those organisms has uh, prolonged chance they have much uh, chance of being preserved so these are the factors which basically guide an organisms whether they would uh, being preserved during the fossilization process or not preserved in the fossilization process uh, another thing uh, basically it is not the um, favorable condition that is the accessible versus access inaccessible environments basically it is uh, uh, related with the human activity that is whether an organism is reported from a place or not uh, as i already told you that fossil record is not complete so that because most of the organic bodies they are not preserved during the fossilization process they are completely lost uh, now whenever someone try to uh, report or someone try to describe uh, someone try to uh, i uh, discover some fossils from the rock record then must be that area is must be very much accessible to a human being now uh, what is the most accessible uh, place to your opinion uh, in the the flatlands or in the uh, high mountain peaks in the ever peaks of everest the high mountain ranges of himalayas or compared to the uh, gangetic plains of uh, india so obviously the gangetic plains the flatlands are more accessible people can go easily uh, people can walk there easily where are very few peoples uh, can reach out the top of the uh, himalayan peaks 
so those areas although they may have uh, fossils but because of their inaccessible positions uh, such as the mountain peak such as the dense forest such as the ocean deep ocean bottoms because of their inaccessibility uh, report from those places fossil report from those places is very poor compared to the flatlands so basically this is not uh, directly related to fossilization uh, but this thing is related to whether your uh, fossil record from uh, is complete or not that is related to that part uh, whether you will get fossils from all places in equal amounts or not so accessible areas have more fossil records uh, inaccessible areas be due to their inaccessible environmental condition from those areas uh, fossil record is now if we try to draw a binary pore plot with the burial rate that is the sedimentation rate and the preservation potential you can see that the if we continuously increasing the burial rate my preservation potentially is uh, readily increasing so more and more burial rate more and more higher values along the y-axis that is higher values of burial rate my preservation potentiality of an organisms will be much much higher so you can see that a live assemblage of organisms after it dates only a minute fraction survived the necrolysis stage and then among this death assemblage only few are survived in the um, biostratinoid part that is the total initial fossil assemblages and from that initial fossil assemblages only a very few fraction is survived the diagenesis part so ultimately you can see from the life assemblages only a very minute minute fraction is being preserved and discovered as fossil record so that is why it is said that fossil record is incomplete that means most of the organic bodies most of the ancient most of the organic remains of the ancient world they are being lost during the fossilization process now does lack of fossils in a rock mean that organisms were not living in the area suppose you are visiting a place visiting a rock record visiting a sedimentary rock terrain and you did not get any fossil uh, or any organic um, traces there so does it indicate that no organisms lives on at those places in the ancient time the answer is no because every assemblage of fossils represent an extremely small portions of the organisms once living in an area and as i already told you that only a minute fraction is preserved uh, in the fossil record most of the organic remains are being destroyed during the fossilization process so lack of fossils in rock does not indicate uh, that organisms were not living in the area maybe or there are ample amount of organisms in that area but during fossilization processes uh, their records are destroyed uh, by the taphonomic factors now without understanding how the fossil formed we cannot fully understand the organisms or its ancient environment most importantly without studying these processes we cannot know what information is lost from the fossil record or how the record is biased toward, towards or against certain groups of organisms so only the taphonomy will describe you why all the organisms are not preserved why the hard part bearing organisms are favored in fossilization process why the soft bodied organisms are not preserved in the fossilization process why a marine organisms is being favored in the fossilization compared to a terrestrial organisms okay so these questions can only be answered these um, answers can only be understandable if you study or if you can have a clear idea about the taphonomic condition uh, of those organic remains how did you identify whether a fossil is taphonomically affected or not suppose you are getting a 
uh, fossil assemblages in rock record and you want to study whether this assemblages is taphonomically affected or not now there are some simple tools simple evidences by which you can identify suppose this is a bivalve there is a two valves uh, jointed in this portion the immediate effect after this may happen that in normal condition the soft part is decomposed only the hard part of the body is preserved in exceptional situation the entire organic body is preserved that is all the hard part and soft parts are preserved that is the exceptional situation here i describe you three conditions by which the evidence of this organisms can be preserved after the death of organism the soft part is decomposed only hard part is preserved here after the death of organisms in exceptional situation both hard and soft parts are preserved in normal condition after the death of an organisms the soft parts are decomposed these uh, dead bodies these organic remains are now exposed to surfacial activities uh, disarticulation of the two valves happen then it will suffer transportation fragmentation bioerosion rounding of edges all those th uh, things in biostatonomy can happen so ultimately from this entire biotic body you may get this much of uh, organic remain so often it is very difficult to identify in which type of organic body does this uh, hard part belongs to so they are by uh, their taxonomic uh, affinity to de determination their taxonomic affinity determination is sometimes very very difficult here you can see that after the death of an bivalve the two valves are being opened up and during the prolonged wave activity these two valves are being separated here you can see all are separated valves but originally these two valves uh, these valves are joined together here you can see disarticulation of valves that is the most common thing observed for this group of organisms after their death and when they suffer some taphonomic processes here you can see some uh, linear long organic cells these are known as gastropods uh, if after its death it is uh, deposited random it is deposited then the most favorable position of deposition is random orientation of the cells here you can see a recent deposition of these gastropods random orientation this is oriented like this this is oriented like this this is oriented in this direction this is in this direction so random orientation of these elongated cells here it is from the recent day time here it is from the cretaceous record here you also see that the cells are oriented randomly no particular orientation direction random orientation but in this below picture you can see they are have a crude orientation either these cells are oriented like this this is like this this is oriented like this so almost all the cells are directed to a particular direction that means this particularly directed orientation of uh, gastropod cells indicates that they have uh, they suffer some taphonomic processes after their death and oriented in this manner. Now, fossils found together within a single stratum need not to be contemporaneous with one another, but may represent a mixed remains of organisms that lived at different times and never interacted with one another. Suppose uh, in the present day, the organisms lived in any conditions they live there and after that day they will settle now and an fossil from the ancient world they are eroded from the rock record and deposited with the present day uh, organic remains so now these two different times organic remains are mixed together now this type of assemblages indicates a mixed assemblages that that will neither indicate the ancient time uh, truly nor indicate the uh, present day time truly the entire uh, organic um, uh, remain assemblages so in that case we call them as time averaging echnofossils that is the trace fossils of organisms they can't be allochthonous because say uh, you can see the burrows of organisms here 
that is the uh, subsurface nest subsurface shelters of organisms who dig their uh, shelter uh, into the subsurface under the sediment cover and later those uh, shelters those uh, nests are covered up by sediments and take the uh, shape of the original uh, home original house of those subsurface organisms now these are known as burrows or boardings of organisms now suppose if these burrows that is a uh, trace fossil of the organisms it indicates the resting uh, trace of an organisms now suppose if these uh, resting trees if these burrows are dislodged from its original position so that burrow which is dislodged from its original position it will lost its identity because here you can see that the burrows are oriented almost vertically if it is dislodged from its original position then it will lie down horizontally so all the orientation uh, the environment where it is formed the sediment where it is formed uh, even the uh, biotic bodies sometimes are found there all those uh, indicators all those evidences uh, are being lost if they are dislodged from their source rock so that means if they are allochthonous they then they will lose their identity then they will not give you any significant evidence on the ancient world so for studying an igno fossil for studying a trace fossil that trace fossil must must be autochthonous that means they must be preserved where they are formed if they are transported if they are dislodged if they are transported from their uh, place of origin then they lost their identity then they are of no use at all and sometimes uh, during this transportation they are all uh, losing their identity also so thank you that is a brief introduction of uh, taphonomic processes hope you will understand this uh, for details you may please go to the book of peter doyle named understanding fossils uh, here you can find a very good illustration of uh, the topic taphonomy thank you